Hey everybody, it's Cinnamon Cooney, your Archer Friend. Today, I'm so excited because I'm going to show you how you can create this gorgeous autumn wildflower abstract painting for yourself at home, step by step, in acrylic on canvas. Now, to help me do that is my husband, John. Hello. He's going to be the voice that you hear sort of floating over the airwaves, and also he's going to make sure that everything turns on and that the cameras are pointing at what's going on. He kind of runs all the technology here while I'm teaching you the painting, so we're sort of a team duo. If you're wondering what that's what that is. I got a, a cool question about that. I want to say hi to Daisy, uh, who is watching really late with us. I saw that kind of coming up in ah. the chat. Hi, and I see Lost and Found is not lost anymore. You've been found, and it's good to see you here at the live, too. Oh my gosh, I'm excited about today. This is going to be a really fun painting. You're going to learn a lot of great techniques. Um, we're really going to work on value. I love that this is almost monochromatic because it's going to let you really get into how brush stroke and texture and how light or dark something is creates shape and form on your canvas. And again, we're going to really break it down. Now, this is going to be chapter marks so you're going to see steps going up and then after we're going to do our best to create little time stamps that match those steps so that you can find your place again in the video on replay on top of that about seven to 14 days after the video we're going to release written out instructions that match the step by steps that match the video so if you're a learner that needs kind of a layered process that's going to be available to you i want you to know how much that's going to be you ready john it's free. Oh, free. So when I tell you that I've written a book for you and it's free, you go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that thumbs up on the video because guys, it's free. It's pretty cool, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, let's go over the materials we're using and we'll just jump on into the lesson. Ooh, I love when I'm small. This is an eight by eight canvas. I have uh, sort of painted on here. My wish or intention for you at home is that you bloom and grow into your painting. I have the colors out today, cad yellow medium, ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, Mars black, dioxazine purple, phthalo blue, titanium white, and cad red. Mm, can you mute me for a second? I got a hiccup. You're muted. It's okay. Hiccups happen. Okay, okay, you were back. Yeah, okay. I'm powered a bunch of soda <laughs> right ah. before coming on here. And I'm like, it's like, I didn't know if it was a hiccup. I didn't know what was coming. I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> you were preparing for I anything. was preparing for the worst. I was preparing to go viral for the wrong reason. <laughs> Though, is any viral a bad viral? Yes, yes. Some viral is a bad viral, right? Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to end up on Dr. Richie for any reason. <laughs> okay, let's put up a step. This is step, step one. one. All right, you're gonna love this. This is this is gonna be an easy peasy step. We're gonna take a. I'm gonna use a three and a quarter catalyst angle Princeton brush. Do you need the brush for this step? No, it's just what I'm using right now because we're gonna be just painting the entire canvas with ultramarine blue. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Now, if you're here. Oh, Adrian Elizabeth says, hey, it's my first uh, live too because they're talking to somebody else who's Jay, J, uh, Jay Richardson says it's their first time. So many firsts. All right. If you are here for your first time on your first live, say hi to everybody in the chat. I am, I hope, a good teacher. I work pretty hard at being a good teacher, but I think one of the things that makes uh, the classes that we do some of the best online, if not maybe the best online, I'd like to think so, is the community, is the people who come to our live streams and who are in our groups, who are always there to help a fellow traveler on the journey of art. So even if you're shy, just say hi real quick uh, so we can get to know you and you can start uh, meeting your art family. Yeah. Isn't that nice? It's nice to find a place where, uh, especially nowadays, people are still invested in being kind, still invested in uh, being courteous to each other. You remember, you remember that? Kindness and courtesy yeah. was this thing we used to do a few years ago, but then we just <laughs> we just stopped. We got locked in our houses for too long. <laughs> We're like, I've got no decency left in me. I don't know what's happening with the world. But here, it's a nice place to be. Notice that I'm just painting this messy. That's why I said you don't have to worry about having this brush or anything. It's just going to be just fine no matter how you paint it. Because what we want is to tone the entire canvas blue. This is like, you know, uh, when you do drawing on colored paper. 
same principle, same concept, same idea. Now I am making sure that the edges of my canvas are painted. So if I were to frame this, uh, the frame would sit nicely on the piece. Oh, so many new folks, so exciting. And oh my goodness, the bug has spent uh, to send us a, a super chat. And they say, I spent 24 hours in a meta once. I will say I totally had a field day. <laughs> if you're new here, be prepared for the dad jokes. And if you need jokes like that, hang around. We have many, we have the dad jokes. So many. We just figure everybody needs a little a little lightness in their day. Now, before that. I want everything to be dry. Okay, so thank you guys for coming and joining us. You'll find we have a whole bunch of cool stuff down here in the links for you guys for resources. There's the uh, the the traceables, the links to the mini books, all that kind of fun stuff is just right out there um, available for you to download. Uh, what else do we need? Oh, there's uh, the link, the, the subscribe button, the, the share buttons. Those are good. Sharing is caring. So, you know, it tells the algorithm that you love us. For some reason, they love the shares. So, that's an interesting thing. Um, it's good to see you guys. I know so many of you out here today. It's very nice on a November afternoon. There you Lemon are. Squeezy, here I am back again. You're back. I don't have coffee right now because I just, I think I had a little too much coffee this morning. Uh, my mom is back and we're getting to spend some time and I think it's just a lot of coffee and chatting in the morning like old times and uh -huh. I think I've, I may have, I may have hit my full coffee allotment <laughs> already <laughs> by 10 a.m. Uh, I missed saying thank you to Heather C. Thank you so much for sending the cute corgi um, gif in the super chat because boy do I miss shortcake. Yeah. If you're new here, that we have uh, two puppies that are being, I don't know, they're like at camp. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they're being housed at where we're changing from the United States to Ireland and trying to make their life stable where our life is unstable. But I miss them. <laughs> yeah. I miss them. Not enough to make them uncomfortable, but I just miss them terribly. Mm -hmm. How is everybody today? Really so good. good to see everyone. Oh, we've got a good morning from Oregon. Hello, Oregon. Now, in this next step. You ready? Yes, I'm ready. I'm going to come here and I am going to give myself a little guide. Maybe I'll even do it in a, in a bit of phthalo blue. I'm going to come here to the four inch on my ruler. This particular ruler is a T-square. And what it does is it lets you draw it's a straight line. And... Um, I'm just giving myself an idea of where dead center in my canvas is. Let me let me give this to you in a purple so you can see it a little bit better. See that a little bit? Yeah, you can see yeah. that now. It doesn't need to be a big mark. We just want to know where dead center in our canvas is. That can kind of help us make determinations of like, this is where the field is. This is where the sky is. You know, where are we drawing the different objects in our landscape? Because even though it's sort of abstracted, we're still sort of paying attention to those rules a little bit. Just, just some. Now I'm going to take, this happens to just be a quarter inch angle brush in, by Princeton in the catalyst line, but you don't have to have this brush either. I'm just making a line generally across. I'm going to come down, oh gosh, a couple inches and come across here and say, another little meeting line here. This is sort of where our field is going to be. It doesn't have to be level, and the reason it doesn't have to be level is it's not water. <laughs> it's land, and land does all kinds of fun stuff. Then this is going to help us know that above this sort of space, we might have bushes, we might have a wall, we might have different trees, but we've also got sky. That way we're not bothering ourselves to bring the sky down into where we're going to have a landscape. It lets us bisect our world so we can block out the zones of the mm. painting. You guys ready to block out the zones? Yeah. Get into your zone. Now, I have some exciting stuff going on in today's painting. All ears. I'm going to be testing some new brushes that I got sent by uh, Raphael. So excited. Um, and also, my mom is going to be live. My mom, Ginger Cook, is going to be live. I, I, I think it's at 4 o'clock. My moderators will correct me if I shout it out the wrong time today. And if you wanted to see her wedding video. Uh-huh. I would go buy that and check it out because they're going to air the premiere of their wedding video during their marathon live stream. 
I already saw it. It's adorable. You're going to cry. I cried. Very, very nice. Very, very nice. I want to thank uh, the Clarks for doing such a good job of taking care of my fam. And I just can't wait till y'all see that. All right. Now let's come down here. We're going to do an easy peasy thing. We're going to take a little bit of our cad yellow and our ultramarine blue. And we're going to make, and we're going to add a little burnt sienna into it. It kind of makes a dark green, doesn't it? We'll come here, kind of add that <clears throat> dark green down low. Go even darker. Look, if I add more blue to it, it gets darker. Isn't that interesting how that do? Mm -hmm. So a lot of times people don't like the green ultramarine and cad yellow make. And that's honestly because there's a hidden bias in the two paints. That means there's a little red you don't see. Because you think you're mixing yellow and blue, but there's a hidden red in those colors, the pigments. Uh -huh. So it kind of makes them not do saturated greens. But if you're trying to do a late season landscape or dry grass, well, then it's just the best to use ever. Late season? What, what did you say? That? say that again? Late season grass. Late season grass. Late season grass. Interesting. Oh, Crystal Blake's like, they finally did it. So happy for them. They did. They did finally get married. It's very exciting. And Those they're very excited to be kids. married. Those crazy kids. They ran off and eloped. They did <laughs> run off and eloped. I'm all right with that. I don't mind. I'm going to come here and add up just a little kind of thalo boost sort of at the, the top of this and Make sort of a darker band up here. Not easy and fun. Just We're just doing that. Now, rinse out. Rinse, 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 rinse. And then up here, we're going to take a little bit of our white and some of our phthalo blue. And we're going to start the sky. Now there's going to be some trees but we're gonna give ourselves that gradation right now. I am using, if you're wondering, a number 18 Raphael Artini brush. It's kind of like the number eight Cambridge or a number eight Simply Simmons and the filament on it, if you're wondering what is it made of, it's hog bristles. And I'm just going to make a nice little sky coming up here. It's a little lighter at the bottom and it's gonna get darker kind of coming up at the top. It was real funny. Uh, Somebody found that advice triggering the other day. <laughs> they were super upset about it. <laughs> I was like, I don't know what's going on in your life, but sometimes Sky does it. I don't know what to say. We're going to just kind of come here and bring it up a little bit. It's just a starting place for us, okay? Now, while everything's a little bit wet, I can kind of come in and blend over towards from the left to the right, just going across the beginning of a slightly lighter value, right? Because we kind of have the sun over here and it's creating some interesting stuff. So we're doing a, a fun thing. I Now, how I'm getting this effect is that my pressure is light. My brush doesn't have a lot of water in it, and the paint I'm painting into is wet. That's how the blending is happening. You guys doing good? Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, yeah, everyone's so excited. Uh, Lindsay Herbert, why is it better to try harder paintings? Mm. So we put up a step, and I'll dry my canvas, and I'll answer Lindsay's well, very first try, good question. First try. First try. And then... Answer Lindsay's question. Okay, So yeah. stay, check... Keep around, Lindsay. I'm going to answer right. that question. All right, Lindsay. We're going to get that question in just a second. So that's a... Uh, oops. There we go. Yeah. Just hang tight, and we'll read your question. And uh, yeah, it's a good question. I was just making sure I read it, and I got it queued up here. Um, don't forget, if you come to these live shows, you can ask questions too. It's a good reason, if you're catching this on the replay, to try to catch one of our live shows, because we love talking to you guys. It's a really great chance to meet your community, to hang out. Um, don't forget to check out our website. Um, if you're from the 90s, www.theartsherpa.com. If you're not from the 90s, you can probably leave off the www and still get there. I just it depends on which way you want to go. There's two roads the same place. Okay. 
Uh, oh, you have a question. Answer the question and then I'll give them a step. Why is it better to try harder paintings? So I'm going to help us reframe that. Better is is a strong word that that assigns a value to that thought that maybe it doesn't warrant, but there is a reason to sometimes do harder paintings. So the most important thing in painting always is to paint. First and foremost, paint. Paint as often as you can, uh, especially if you're trying to get better. Consistency is everything. The value of sometimes trying a harder painting is that it introduces new skills and it and, and just like when you stretch and you have to I love when I give like fitness advice and I clearly sort of do fitness <laughs> but I used to so we'll say that this I know what I'm talking about when you stretch you know sometimes your muscles are tight but you reach a little further gently and that allows you to stretch further and further every time this is true in painting too so sometimes taking on a more challenging painting or technique the danger my friends mm. is is that you get frustrated if it doesn't come easily to you and you get back into those critical spaces where you let that inner mind troll start to take over and start saying unappropriate, unkind things to you about your artwork. Mm -hmm. So when you take on a harder painting, make sure you're in a really good headspace. You recognize that you are empathetic. Remember, we learn like an artist. We listen to our inner voice. We check for those the inner voices that we have, right? And then we empathize with ourselves. We remember to be kind and recognize where we are in our journey. And we accept that today is where we're at, right? So if you don't have a skill yet, and it's going to be a little challenging, you accept that, right? And then you are present. The painting today isn't the painting tomorrow. And we don't have to worry about the paintings we've done before. It's just today. So that's what all of that does with you. Man, I monologue like a villain on that. That's okay. You're supposed to monologue. This is your show. <laughs> this is my show. And we talk about these things. Now, if you're using the traceable, you could probably go ahead and put in those lines now. You might. It might help you check that you got your landscape in the right place and everything. Um, we're going to be doing a lot of sky painting. So be careful as you put it in that you don't give yourself aggravation uh, to work around the trees and you can always put it back though that's something people forget is i can put my traceable back now i'm gonna treat myself this is a treat treat yourself you know remember that from parks and rec treat yourself um i love that show this is a number 18 artini round brush and it's got hog bristles um, you can absolutely uh, do a Simply Simmons here or just um, a Silverstone or any kind of big, nice, round, chunky brush that's going to let you do blendy scumbles. Mm. I'm going to go ahead and get some white onto my brush. It's lightly damp. All right? We don't want it soaked. Not soaked. We want lightly damp. Get a little blue and white. And I'm going to come up here. And I'm going to begin to put in some of this little blue sky up here. I hear a little ELO in our brains, right? Little Mr. Blue Sky. Mm -hmm. I love it. Uh, Tabalina, do you create and design the painting for yourself or do you find inspiration from other things? This particular one I created myself, but I will sometimes license because I always take care of photographers. I'm adding a little bit more color as I'm coming out. You guys noticing that? I will sometimes license a photograph as reference or use a resource site like Paint My Photo. I'm just adding a little more blue as I come out. Just kind of... Deep in the sky. Notice that where I gently go over these areas, see how I'm gently going over? It is blending because we're working wet into wet. Maybe a little more white into here and I can kind of work it up. Oh, there we go. Now I have some forgiveness down here because I got little trees that I'm going to be putting back in. So always enjoy the areas where you have a little forgiveness. This is almost a scumble, isn't it? The way that I'm doing this. Notice that I'm, pay attention to how the handle on my brush moves because I'm changing the angle of the brush. I'm working from mid belly to toe. All right, I might rinse out because acrylic paint dries on your brush and your canvas. <laughs> I'm going to dry my brush off on a towel, get all the extra water out. You don't really see that off camera because my towel is tucked in my lap. And right now that's what I'm doing is I'm wringing out the brush, getting the extra water out. 
Sometimes I like to let you know what's happening. Now I'm going to come here with my blue, and I just went with pure phthalo blue, didn't I? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be darkening this upper corner, and I'm still doing that soft blending with the brush. Trying to prevent easy to see lines. We definitely want softness in there. I'll go ahead and get a little white and blue. And you can see I am soft blending into my dark corner. So yeah, the, the blending of the sky can feel a little complicated, but once you understand how it works, not too bad, is it? It's not too bad. You know, and you know, but remember we're empathetic with ourselves. If you've never tried this technique before and you're learning how to do it and it's, it doesn't just flow off of you like water, guess what? That's okay. It will. I do a program every year called Acrylic April and everybody paints with me every day. And believe you, by the end of Acrylic April, whatever we're doing, everybody does well. <laughs> because when you paint consistently and often, you will develop the skills. I'm just making sure that I like the transition, the blendingness of my sky. And if I feel like I have too much water in my brush, I just dry it off on my towel. All right. Let's call this a step, John. So that was a lot to do, wasn't it? Yeah. That's a lot to do. You ready? Yes. Step in. Step in. All right, so I very much like what I have going here, but I've got to add some clouds. That's always some work, isn't it? Adding a little clouds. Now, here's an interesting thing. Let's get a little of our burn sienna over here. You're like, what? Yeah, I know. There's a little bit of gray always in clouds. And I'm going to get a little ultramarine blue. What do you know? It makes kind of a gray, doesn't it? I might even get a little of my phthalo blue into it. So that is the grayness of the cloud. Do you see how it biases a little bit brown though? I don't need a lot of it. I just need a little bit to tone the brush. So if you're reading the mini book, that's the mix you're looking for is altering blue and burnt sienna and a little phthalo blue to get a blue gray that has a bit of a bias to the brown. I'm gonna dry out my brush and I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna take my white and get a smidge. See, smidge, that's how I control that. You can always add even more brown into it if you need to. But the control is in the smidge. And I'll come up here and I'm gonna go on the toe of my brush and I'm going to very lightly dance out. It is dancing, a little cloud shape. Cloud chips are weird. They're very rarely little cotton balls that float in the sky. Though it is fun to paint little cotton balls that float in the sky. <laughs> I'm doing a little kind of curve in my stroke. It's not a circle. And I'm saying that because sometimes it appears like I'm doing a circle, but I'm not. More like commas that go different directions. See, we're getting that little first cloud in there. Now I can come back with a little bit of white. And maybe in that cloud, highlight some with a brighter color. See how that picks up? Just on the toe of my brush. You could use a smaller brush if you wanted to. That's okay. That's allowed. Still maybe a little more brown in it. Went and grabbed some blue. The reason I grabbed some phthalo blue is I'm trying to blend this light cloud into the sky. And there's lots of ways to do that. Working wet into wet is one way to do that. Just working a hue that's a little lighter than the sky is another way of doing that. Hue is just a fun way of saying color. Isn't that fun? Now, does this brush help me a little bit get these results? Yes, it does. But could I get it with a bright? Yeah. Or another brush? Yeah, because I've practiced the technique. So getting it with different tools does not necessarily overwhelm me. Notice how these are just light little clouds that are coming into the sky, aren't they? Yeah. Gosh, this is fun. Are you having fun? I hope you're having fun. I'm having a great time. Now, remember, we have some forgiveness down here because we've got trees and bushes and all kinds of things that are coming up. So 
So on this kind of stuff where I start with a digital design that I do, right? So I digitally paint something and then I'm going to paint it in a painting. Mm -hmm. um, it's good to use a tool that has brushes that mimic the medium you're going to paint it in really well. Um, like oil or acrylic brushes. Uh, that way that they kind of do similar effects. Because other then if you don't do that, then you've got to like kind of correct for the effects, which is challenging. Suzanne thinks those clouds are very lovely. They're just lovely. Just so fun to do. And where I need to blend them in more, I just get a little of the blue. I don't think I'm that much different with the stylus either uh -huh. on the clouds and the way that I do them. <laughs> I think thing thing you can do in digital that you can't do in traditional painting is is um, go lighter over darker or kind of like it's a little more forgiving or you can layer. Obviously, we don't have layers in the same way on acrylic paintings. Now I'm going to add a little gray in there. This dancing on the toe of the brush. See, the brush is like just right on that little toe. Yeah. Now, sometimes you guys will say, but my hog bristle brush looks like it got electrocuted. So it's mine. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Super fine. <laughs> it can feel a little overwhelming, I know. I'm going to get a little gray on here, maybe even a little more brown. Kind of making some shadows in those clouds. Giving them a little bit of, they're not just perfectly white. It's a little bit of late, late season interest. Little shadows. So the clouds are shaded really by the hue part of them, how they're going into that. And then also how they um, blend wet into wet. And then this little gray gives them some interesting temperament, doesn't it? Can always, you know, come here and get a little blue on there and look, go right into that little cloud, making it more interesting. That's a hue version of that. Yeah. And rinse out a little bit. All right, let's come back and we'll put some highlights on here. Step it. Step five. Heather Jacobs, what do you think about doing a tutorial on portraits? I think it's great, and there's one coming up after this painting. So be sure and hit the subscribe button, the like, and go hit the reminder on the girl's face we're about to do. Ha <laughs> I love it when I'm actually about to do what people are asking about. I'm getting a little just white on my um, brush here, and I'm going to come to a couple places and very carefully create some white highlights. See how I'm doing? Isn't that fun? What's fun to me? Just dancing it through. Fluffy clouds, says Miramu. Fluffy. I, I, I agree. They are cute and fluffy. Oh, just look at these little clouds come in. They're just, they're almost having a little thought there. They're like, oh. We have the, wind. hmm? we have the windows open, so we sometimes you hear little trucks roll by. Well, more accurately, you have the windows open. <laughs> well, yeah, I do. Because there's a couple, I never open the windows. John's no. like, open every oh, door, your... every window. I'm like, that is too much nature in the house. Close it, it up. It was your mom. My mom did it. Your mom started that. I was the one who, uh, who who was like, well, rather than leaving the doors open, which Cinnamon does not like, how about I open the windows? <laughs> yeah, I'm she so weird about that. So it was an it was a it was a you know, meeting a happy middle ground. 
airflow with no bugs. Well, I'm a house guest, so I don't really get to say anything. <laughs> I mean, other than... And if my mom was visiting, I probably would sort of do whatever she wanted anyways. I love my mom. My mom is great. My mom is fantastic. That's right, Beth. So don't forget the auction marathon today. And you're going to see my mom's wedding video. So true. So true. All right. I think we can dry this and come back and do another step. Okay. Ah, uh, we'll be stepping soon. So nice. To zoom in, please, eh? I can absolutely d zoom in there, uh, Elora. Uh, yeah, I think it's Elora. Elora was just asking me to zoom in on a little bit on the next one, and I'll do that. So I think we're now on the sixth step. So uh, they're talking about um, uh, digital art and um, no digital art. And to me is absolutely art and fine art. You look at the work of Bobby Chu or any of the amazing digital artists out there and you're like, you, you wouldn't question. You go into the spit paint group on Facebook, Facebook, you're going to be like, yeah, this is artist. It's just a different medium. It's just a different medium. And um, it has its place and it can be great. And I think sometimes artists struggle to adopt new mediums. Mm -hmm. I think they're like, no, I won't do the new thing. <laughs> <laughs> but the new thing is still good. Yep. My mom was always really good about raising me to not fear the new thing. So, But then she was an acrylic artist, which in her day was the new thing. That was the, <gasps> not an oil. Huh. But now everyone's like, the acrylic is okay. All right. I don't know what to say about personal lessons, Crystal. I don't know. Um, we've got retreats. And when you come to a retreat, you work one-on-one -on -one with me. And that's pretty exciting. And we've got a retreat in fall with my mom. And we're going to do some retreats in Ireland. Yep. And that's a great time to get with me Very in good. person. Yes. All right. So now I'm going to come here. And I'm going to get into my ultramarine blue. And we're going to do some distant little bushes. Now, look at this. Isn't this great? Because the ultramarine blue is almost transparent. I got to be careful about over zooming here, so I'm not going to get too so big. I'm on just this. creating these distant sort of little, these are bushes that are, they're far away. Far away. Far away. Far away. Now you can see the, she spins the brush there. Yeah, I'm using mostly, I'm painting mostly the corner. When I use a big bright like this, I'm working the corner. But then I can come here and fill in really easily. And then get back into my corner and scumble out the corner. You can do cloud. That's why I was like, you can do clouds with this brush. Yes, uh -huh. you can. Now I'm going to come back with a little more ultramarine blue paint. And you can see like when we come back, it kind of darkens some of it, which gives it some of that value that we're hoping to, uh -huh. to achieve for the distant effects. This is great for like if you need a city and an atmosphere or just something that's far away. Ooh, that cloud looks like a dragon, says Suzanne. I, I like it. I like when a cloud looks like a dragon. That's good. Mm -hmm. It's always good. I love that you guys see animals on the palettes and animals in the clouds. <laughs> it just makes you all just a delight, I have to tell you. Now, here in the center, I can come back with a little of my white. I'm going to come in and sort of blend a little bit of mist right here. Mm -hmm. So I'm blending a little misty mist. This is a little misty mist. And that's because these are distant trees, <laughs> and they're far away, and they need some misty mist. I'm going to rinse this out, and we're going to do something. Uh, we're going to dry off uh, the brush. I want to move to Ireland, says Nancy. Oh, it's so fun. It's a lot of work, but it's super fun to do. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm going to take a little bit of my phthalo blue and my dioxazine purple. And what you get with these two is this extraordinary indigo. Do you see that? Uh-huh. That's how you get that crazy dark color. And I'm going to come right here. And kind of imply, well, maybe this is like, I think... My feeling was that this was like a distance hedge 
could be uh -huh. a fence though. It could be a fence. I, I see the potential of it being like a fence. I'm going to bring it down a little bit, a little more depth into what I've got going on, I think. Because, and the reason is I want to have uh, some room for my dark bush. Come right here on the corner. And we're going to paint up some like little trees. Notice that I'm just using these little kind of curls and I'm allowing this edge to be so irregular. It's because trees be messy. Yep. The way we're able to play these different types of blues against each other is how we really get to, you know, make this feeling on the painting. I'm just over here deepening that there. Just coming along. I'm going to bring this across there because that's the ni nice distant background, right? Uh-huh. And if I go over here back into my ultramarine blue and even a little white, but just a little. I'm blending that in. That's how I'm getting that misted effect right here. I know I've got another tree that will be forward on that landscape, but right now this is what I'm trying to get. And I can mix a half tone of ultramarine into the mix that I made of the thalo blue and dioxazine purple. So many blues. Uh huh. I might even bring this down a little bit. So I'm bringing the mist down. Just more mist. Rinse out. Now I do want to raise some of my tree lines as I'm looking in and I'll rinse my brush out completely and dry it off on a towel. It's me drying it off on a towel. Uh, Alora's like, this is such a small canvas that the camera work is just super critical. That's what John is. John's the guy. And I'm just well, ultramarine blue. Sometimes, not hmm? always. I'm not, I miss stuff. I mean, well, we're a team, right? The community and us, we're a team. You guys go different angle, <laughs> turn the sound up. You know, we work together. So you can see, I'm just raising these distant bushes a bit. So there's that layering in. And then back into a little of the diox and thalo blue and deepening up of this bush. Yeah, I like working bigger canvases sometimes better because it makes getting high detail in easier. But sometimes, you know, you've got what you've got. I'm adding a little white to this to kind of create a little mist back here. Flink, flicking up, flicking up, and there we go. Let's call that a step because that was a lot to do, but look at the layers that we're getting. Now, do we need to dry this or are we good to keep, keep rolling? Um, I think drawing this at this stage will really help us a lot. So let's dry. Okay, I'll let you dry there. Thought we might just get a little quick dry in. Um. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I appreciate that. that. I was just reading up on the chat. Thank you for the support. I do appreciate it. And we're on a step seven. Alora is asking a very good question. Are you using extender to help with the blending time? So I'm not, 
Right now, the water is the extender and it is slowing down the drying time a little. I do use extenders and uh, this is the one that I really, really recommend. Really the only one that I recommend and I will have it in my store when the store is open is this one because it's just, and I like gloss because I have this feeling like I like the shinier bit of it and I feel like it has less drag, but some people like it when it's matte or semi-gloss so it doesn't add shine to their paint. That's really up to you, but it's a slow drying extender and it's the best on the market. Just saying. I'm going to sip my, my, the thing. Sip, sip. It's okay. Now, for the next thing, I am, I'll go ahead and just, just to make my life easier, get my little angly brush here, because it's good for details. And I'm going to get some of my phthalo blue and dot ox purple, making that deep indigo. And we'll go ahead and right here, over this sort of lightened area, I'm going to add the trunk of a tree. Like you do. And go ahead and get into a little of my white, this brush. I'm going to come on the inside of that tree. So you just add a little white to that. It's going to help it. And maybe even kind of talk about some little highlights here. And I wipe this off just on my towel. That's why I'm not having to rinse. And I'm going to imply maybe some Distant little bit of that. Oh, I like that so much. And just to make life easier for myself, I'm going to get a round number eight artony. Um, and that's just so that I have a smaller tip because like using the big one, I can, I can do things, but it's like extra work and I have the brush here. And so there's no need but you can use whatever brush that you want to use. And I'm just doing that same sort of little comma. Now this little guy is going to come up. Anything new about the brushes yet? So right now our big thing is to get to the brushes, I have to get the uh, e-commerce store open, open. Um, and that's what every, all my work is. And So many things in motion right now. <laughs> that is what is between me and that. Because once that's open, then I can do, I'll be in Europe and I can do some speculative relationships. I do know that there is a friend of mine uh, maybe talking to some companies about making a connection right now and I hope that's going well. Um, we'll have to just see. I love how <laughs> these are. <laughs> I do. Yeah, they're really I cool. come here and just sort of play with this, this little bush. Such a funny little bush. Isn't that a happy little bush? What a weird little bush you are. Nice. I rinse that. We'll call this a step because that's kind of, you know, integral to getting this in. And I don't want to overwhelm you. And then we're going to kind of come forward a little bit. No and then dry. we'll go back. Don't need to dry. All right, then. We just go. There you go. All right. So here we are. We've got a pretty good distance guy. We've got a pretty good background. We're going to be coming through the middle grounds and foregrounds. And we're back into that wonderful green, which was the ultramarine blue and the cad yellow. A little more blue if you want the green to be deeper. A little more yellow if you want it to be brighter. Sort of coming across here. I can even get into my uh, deep blue and blend it in. Look at that. Creating some distant effects where I want it to be darker. It's so much fun. Then a little more yellow. Like look right here, I can come along there and add a little highlight into that distant, distant landscape. 
It's just so wild that it works as well as it does. My favorite. Now, the grass coming forward is an interesting bit and I'm gonna kind of put in, I'm gonna take my brown and a little bit of my uh, green into it, but I'm gonna add more yellow. So there's the green, but lots of yellow and it's brown and see it's gonna give me that color. That sort of late dried out grass. And I'm gonna go ahead and just come along this edge. You can go more burnt sienna if you want it to be brighter, but just getting that sort of late summer grass started. And I'm going to pull it forward in a triangle. And I like the sound of the brush going. I was just, just noticing short that short little myself. vertical strokes that are coming down, and I'm just weaving it forward. Kind of got that going forward, weaving it forward. And then I'm going to, interestingly enough, get a little brown and black. And lightly brush in some of these deep values. Isn't that wild? Yeah. Just on the toe of the brush, you can see the, like little open lines. I'm not painting solid color fields. I, I think of it like weaving or mosaics. Oh my goodness, how is everybody today? Just such a good day to paint. Every day is a good day if you paint, right? For sure. Very famous person said that. I may have heard it before. You might have heard it before. It's a true statement, though. All right. Yeah, if you're looking to get the last of my old brushes, King's Framing and Art in Canada has them. I think Jackson's Art Supply in the UK has them. And I think Jerry's Artorama might have some left. I think QVC sold out. To be super honest, I do. I think QVC totally sold out. Now, if you want to look ahead after the show to see what other lives are coming up, oh my goodness, the holiday, the winter wonders come up. And, um, you know, it's just really nice. Some great designs. I think the Christmas kitten is the cutest thing I've ever seen. So cute. And then I've got a, an abominable snowman coming up. Notice I'm not just painting out all the grain or anything behind it. It's just a very textural effect oh thank you six i hope you're having an amazing day too uh does hobby lobby sell her uh, archer or brush cleaner now i made that by hand <laughs> that was an interesting journey with my soap because like i i i i created that unfortunately shared the recipe with the wrong person <laughs> you know but it's actually harder to make than you think and we're going to get back to making it again it is the best brush soap out there for acrylic paint I think ever ever done and I did it in response to having gone to a few NAMTAs and seeing that most of the brush cleaner was for our either watercolor brushes which are natural hair or for our oil brushes which are often natural hair oh if they have a That's noisy motorcycle hot rods on the weekend oh is that a hot rod not a motorcycle uh, well, all right let's here. call this a step because that was a lot of work to get in no dry no need to dry. Well, actually, let's dry. Let's dry. I think about it, and then I think, what if somebody's painting is wet at home and with that mess? So what happens is mine is dry. Uh -huh. And so but John will be like, no dry. And I'm like, no, I don't need to dry. But then I think about what if your painting weren't dry? And then I'm like, oh, yeah, we better dry. So sometimes I'm doing something for you. Okay. Because I don't know what your, if your painting is wet or not. So we would want the painting to be dry before we went on to the next step. So we're going to do a quick dry. 
just to make sure because you do want to drive before you go on to the next step and that's you know so I don't think it'll take too, very much for her to go there. and then we'll restep so that you can okay so I'm gonna I'm gonna nine ya again I'm gonna re nine ya <sighs> so lovely all right, now I am gonna come back here and I'm going to take a little bit of my cad red and my cad yellow together. They're sort of fun. I'm gonna come to the top of these and I'm gonna hit a little bit of that at the top of the top of the bush. Just a little bit. Just the edgy edges. Nothing too deep. Yeah, I want to get deep about it. Definitely more cad red. Bring a little highlight down through the tree a bit, like like the sunlight has caught it. This is how we kind of tell the trees apart from each other. That wild. Yeah, we'll try to get the brush cleaner going again. We've just got to get settled or we've got to find a partner who uh, won't take the recipe and then sell it to somebody else. <laughs> and real things we go through, I swear. Being in business is no joke, yo. Yeah, that's crazy. It is so difficult. I kind of relate to that lady, Joy. <laughs> if you ever saw the documentary about her. Oh, yeah. All right, actually, I'm going to rinse out because I don't want any of the yellow here. I'm going to take my cad red and my docks purple together, and I'm going to make this really gorgeous color. But I don't want any of my yellow in it. So I did pull out and rinse. So I'm going to take a little of my docks purple and mix it into my cad red. And this is going to give me this great, there it is, that dead-on, exactly kind of fall leaf purple red that you saw on the background trees. Just tapping that in. And you can see how having the little highlight there is so nice to capture that. Oh, Lindsay, there's no place to order any right now. It's all sold out. And we have, like, what I have, I think, is packed in my storage unit. can always add a little more cad red to it if I need it to be so you can get it brighter. That really is. That's a lot brighter. Yeah, it went a little bit brighter than I managed. wanted it to, so i got to knock it back. But that's okay because you just go into your background color and look. Just be like, calm down. And it'll be like, but I, I thought you wanted me. And I'll be like, no. And it'll be like, okay, I just was trying to be cheerful. But if you think I was too cheerful. The, my paint talks to me. Like, often. <laughs> all right that nice little bit of color on those trees maybe a little bit of my orange going here again just a little bit catching their little highlights Uh, Vampire Inks, what documentary on Joyce? The lady that made the Wonder Mop, they, uh, it wasn't really a documentary, it was a movie. And it, it starred the girl from, uh, I think, The Hunger Games. Um, <laughs> I'm not, it may have had, I don't remember. And uh, it was just good. It was just about what happened to the lady who made the Wonder Mop and all the stuff that went on. And, like, I watched the whole movie and I'm like, true story. 
<laughs> Back to my purple over here. Just sure it's good. I think I'm going to add some of this sort of right here. So I'm coming kind of across here. Distant. It's distant. Just touching it out there. All right. I think we can... I. You don't have to have it dry at home, or I don't have to have it dry. We can just keep moving forward. You, uh, you want to step it here, though? Yeah. Moderator Rainbow is right. It can take up to a month and a half for the soap to be ready once it's been poured into a mold. And because we make the soap with some really intense ingredients, like basically... Not for nothing, the formulation is a close cousin to what they use to deal with plague. <laughs> but it's also what you would traditionally have used in a Renaissance studio to break down pigments. Mm -hmm. And those products can be challenging to work with and they need to mellow in the soap for a second. And also the soap is pretty, you know, because we're trying to break down acrylic paint. It's not for your hands. Right. You know, it, it'll get paint off your hands, but it really is for just brushes because it's just so like... <laughs> That's like no joke. Uh, they had the best price on Masters and Palettes, but they were back ordered, so I got mine from Amazon. My birthday present to myself. I got it yesterday. Congratulations, Suzanne. That's wonderful. Let's get some color in here. So I'm going to take my ultramarine blue and my phthalo blue together. I like them always mixed as sort of like a half blue of each other. And I'm going to tap out some blue flowers let's get just a smidge of white into it maybe we want it to be dark right because it will have shadow but we want it to show up as blue not black so these are cone corn flowers if you're familiar with it um, and then like a california poppy I, not that they grow naturally together, but I was looking at references of California poppies and cornflowers, uh -huh. and I was like, gosh, I wish these grew together. And then I was like, you know what? what? I'm an artist. <laughs> so in my world, they now do. Just making little short marks. Can you see how little short marks are? Uh huh. Just little short marks. We're actually little not that far marks. from done, guys. Really? Yeah. It's this just one of those paintings. It's fun I guess to do. It's like true. this Her is fussy. This is fussy. I get that it's fussy, but it's not actually. It's not like yesterday's abstract. I would say is harder than today's abstract. But you know, everybody has a different hard painting, so you never know. You know, that's a shirt. Yesterday's abstract was harder than today's abstract. Mm hmm. Yesterday's abstract was harder than today's abstract. I think that may be a shirt for all Gen X. <laughs> <laughs> I swear I had the most Gen X thing this morning because like my mom drinks coffee and I drink coffee and, and now my eldest who is working on social media for me drinks coffee and um, there's a, I'm used to getting the first cup is what I'll say <laughs> and that's that's how I survive my life. So love is me making a, a pot a oh, French press and having her wake up just and he comes and wakes me up and he's like, the coffee's ready. And then I, I come I, down and I immediately start with the coffee. I don't even mess around. And I, I come down and my mom already had a cup. <laughs> a cup and, I, and I want you guys to understand how quickly this is time. See, I've got this time so that the water is boiling, but it hasn't been poured onto the coffee yet. And then I go up and I wake her up and I come down. And then I pour it over and I set a three-minute timer. And about the time that she comes downstairs, I've pressed it down. And it's just like within a minute she's been there. But today... Within that minute. <laughs> it was gone. And then was... my eldest was like, it's just coffee. And I'm like, <laughs> you don't understand how coffee keeps everyone around me. Alive. Like, I am Gen X and I have very few things. <laughs> we were not given nice things. And coffee was the nice thing we were given. <laughs> <laughs> don't mess with mama's coffee. <sighs> But because we're staying in my mom's house, and if you've ever uh, observed mom and, and John Little, he calls her the queen. Mm -hmm. This is, he's not being ironic. He's like, he always has. And That's so how like, he rolls. It's how he rolls, man. It's how he rolls. And uh, so he's like the queen. So 
she still gets the first cup of coffee because I'm in her house and she's the queen. Ah. So that's how I can, I'm okay with my mom doing it. Not like really, really, but kind of. So notice that I am leaving lots of open spaces between the blue. And I'm creating little clumps. Little clumps of color. I haven't done the highlights on it yet. I need to really kind of map it out. And it's just easier to get that in. I'm going to add some little bits of blue up front that might be kind of peeking through the stems. Something you don't really always think to do, but you must do. I love it. Gen X doesn't get nice things. Don't you take my coffee? <laughs> <laughs> we were told to eat something for our mental health. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> some peanut butter and jelly. Are you upset? You must be hungry. Have some peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> But they said that there was going to be a nuclear war, and I'm just a little concerned about it. Shake it off. Hide right. under your desk. Have a tab and, and sit down. Have a tab. You were allowed tab. <laughs> I'm going to continue to add a little white to my blue. I'm just catching some highlights here. If you're painting along with me, it's ultramarine blue and phthalo blue. My dad did not let me have. No, but I mean, that's, that's about the about iconic you can get from it. Have a tab and just chill out. <laughs> my dad was an early believer that the dyes and soda and the sugars and sodas were a danger to us all. So, like, <sighs> you were allowed one Welch's grape soda, like, a week. <laughs> right. It was like a big deal too, man. Like I would like hoard that. I had my little can of soda and I was like, I'd sip it as slowly as I could. And like it was wine. I would like do that little gargling in the back of my mouth. Because other than that, I got Hanson soda, which now I would say is good and would intentionally get. But at the time I thought it was not good soda. And also my friends did not think it was good soda. They're like, why won't your parents get you real soda? <laughs> my answer because because real soda will not survive Armageddon that's why <laughs> just <laughs> oh my goodness I'm in a good mood today it's been a minute but I am <laughs> all right uh... all right here we go the acid rain drills. Oh, it's air raid drills. Beth Mulligan's like air raid drills. Yeah, my mom used to have the air raid drills. That though, not fun. Uh huh. And then you know they made that day after the Tomorrow movie, which was like, and then they gave us Terminator, and so Terminator was more like a documentary for us. <laughs> and then I don't know if you guys watch anything, but in China they made an observation system. It's a camera system that observes people and rates their faces. Like it's looking for them to, th I'm not making this up. They said this, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. It was just like released as their technology. Um, things you have to say nowadays. <laughs> I haven't gone crazy, don't worry. But they have this system and it, and it watches everybody and um, they called it Skynet. And I have to say, like, I did not have a sense of humor about that at all. Don and I were looking at each other going, it's just over. Skynet? Skynet. And it, it watches you for your happiness. <laughs> it predicts, it precogs. Do you remember that movie with... With the, yeah. I'm just still da dabbling out my blue. Uh, with um, it's kind of crazy. Um, Tom Cruise, and he and he and they're the cognitive people. Now we're gonna go back through and just add a little highlight, okay, guys? Just a little highlight. I've added a little white, and I'm just touching it along there, and we just go through real quick and add a little highlight. Anybody remember that movie? Oh my goodness. Where they were like, they would convict people for pre-crimes. 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 And I look over there and I'm like, they've got a security system that watches people and convicts them for pre-crimes. And I just want to be like, China, these were not instructions. <laughs> these were <laughs> cautionary movie tales from the 80s. Well, look, I mean, once they got the three shells, that's the only thing I'm waiting to find out what's happening. That's right. The three shells from Demolition um, that's Man. That's the only thing that I'm waiting for. <laughs> it's like you're walking to a bathroom, there's going to be three shells and I know it's going to be over because that movie has predicted. Everything. everything everything it knew everything 
<sighs> I would like to say that at least we did something about the hole in the ozone layer. Uh -huh. That's what I tell my kids. I'm like, but we worked on the ozone. Yes, we missed a lot of other problems, but we worked on the ozone. I stopped using Aquanet. And given the hairstyles in the 80s, that was a gift for your future. <laughs> Just adding little highlights. See, what we're trying to do is like keep those dark shadows. The blue will really pop against the orange. And so you don't have to go too crazy, but you do want to make sure that you make it look like there is, see how I'm tapping along the top? So this is the phthalo blue and ultramarine blue and a little titanium white. That's how you get this blue. Tornado Alley, yeah, those are scary. Minority Report, I think. Yeah, Beth Mulligan has right. it. Minority Report. Shh. Where your future will be told by scribing little words on balls. <laughs> it's like the lottery, but, you know. <laughs> but worse. But a bad one. <laughs> <sighs> so bad. I'm going to add a little bit here. I think it just needs that balance. Be like, you know, that pre-crime thing showed All up right. to me. Be like, well, you already know what's going to happen then, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> so I hope you brought your rodeo boots. <laughs> yeah. So weird. <laughs> like, <sighs> I think I must be feeling better because I'm talking about things. Because like you go through a period of time when you stop talking about things because it seems like everybody went crazy a little bit. Not well. us. We're okay, right? We're in the <laughs> same shelter. Are you good? I'm still good. I'm still good. <laughs> I'm still good. All right, let's add some orange to this. Have we put up a step? Uh, I can. I think. Yeah, I think we're going to go on the next step here. Okay. Here we go. Eleven step. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to do a little more cad red than uh, cad yellow. Right, and we're going to start out and we're going to give ourselves some the basis of some California poppies. I am still using this number eight Artney round brush hog. These bigger little marks, can you see I go da da da? And these are actual individual flowers, and then I will get into some clumps too. Right. Lynn likes the painting, and I'm so glad, Lynn. Thank you. I like doing this painting. Now, if you enjoy not politically correct commentary, anybody saying anything, you've got to watch my mom's show. <laughs> um. They're going to be doing a marathon today and showing their wedding video, which is super cute. So I'm sort of filling in with the orange now, and it's just popping. More cad red on this one popping. than cad yellow. We'll come back with the cad yellow in a minute. We're just making kind of a, a again, California poppy is a deep orange. So I'm just touching this around. I do leave green to show through. I'm not filling the field. Yeah, name their system Skynet. <laughs> just, just why? Yeah, there's a whole series of things. It's like... And then when they were asked about it, they were like, well, it's not the bad Skynet. It's the that, good Skynet. That's exactly what it was. I'm quoting. It's not the bad Skynet. <laughs> like, well, you're reading people's faces for their... In it's not the good one either, guys. I, I don't think you guys... They, no one asked me anything, so it's okay. I can have world opinions because nothing will come with my world opinions. There's like a whole group of people who also watched RoboCop and thought that was a good idea. Actually, sometimes I kind of wish that we had something like RoboCop, like... But, like, but if you watch not that, the actual <laughs> robot that Elon Musk has, which is the guy in the suit that dances around. I want the one that Boston Dynamics is working on. That thing is scary. Yeah, but the, uh, the cautionary tale that we were told, like, don't build a Robocop because this is why it could go bad. I feel like they made that movie and told us that, and then nobody paid attention. <laughs> like, at all. And then we made this whole other movie where, like, you know, if you go to another planet where there might be alien life then you might need to bring Sigourney Weaver if you want to get off that planet. Look, can I just bring Sigourney Weaver for everything? Because I'm just dabbing this orange around. See how we're just breaking it up? We're dabbing it around. We're dabbing it around. We're making these irregular shapes, and that's what's giving us the space and our size and everything. I think for the safety of all humanity, 
Elon would be required to bring Sigourney Weaver to Mars for first contact. I think Sigourney Weaver went and Elon. I don't think that they could be in a room together. That, that may be true. They may be. She does. He would blank around and find out is what would happen. <laughs> <laughs> because like not for nothing, she is not a spring chicken, but she looks amazing. And then I just found out she can hold her breath for like five minutes because she was getting ready for the movie Avatar. So a Navy SEAL trained her. Yeah, right. I can barely get in and out of a high car. And this woman is like. I'll hold my breath for five minutes. Wow. So corny. But that's what I mean. She, she, I think she, she is can, Ripley. Right. And would have no problem pushing somebody out of an airlock and saying, nope, that was, we just, nope. Yeah, I feel like that might be true. Her and Jamie Lee Curtis would be a power move. <laughs> <laughs> the two of them on a rocket. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to send back word on what we do next. They're in my, charge. My dinner party. I would have Jamie Lee Curtis. I would have Sigourney Weaver. I would definitely have Stephen King. I would invite the artificial intelligence Lambda from Google. <laughs> And uh, uh, Lyman, the philosopher who, like, talked to her, (laughs) (laughs) I would have the coolest dinner parties. (laughs) I don't have any dinner parties, so this is an empty thread. Yes. I'm going to just keep adding this, like, dark color. See how we're doing? This dark orange. Uh, Have you guys seen an AI robot that is fighting to be viewed as a sentient being? Now, that's scary. I have. That is Lambda. And now more and more, G- GPT-3 is making an yeah. argument for its sentience. There are computers that are making an argument for their sentience. There are people saying that they can't be sentient. There are people saying that they can. There are people pointing out very reasonably that sometimes the people determining if they're sentient don't think human beings are sentient, so they may not be the best people to execute the tests. I I now just say thank you to Alexa when I ask for things, just in case. But we'll just say they're afraid... Afraid may be strong. They're reluctant to give what's called a Turing test. To well, maybe. actually, several of them, like Google made it where you, you can't. It's a fail. The, the It has to. It, it's it's required to say it's a ro- Like, it, it they, they you're not allowed to make. So Google said we're not allowed okay, to make AI. That's tu- what Google said. The Turing and test. And then they accidentally made AI. So now they're trying to say we, we didn't. We didn't. And the bigger one, Palm, it's definitely not AI either. The small one, like Lambda is small compared to Palm. <laughs> so to give you an idea, the Turing I test. I don't follow this at all. No, it clearly doesn't. <laughs> the Turing test was a, was designed to be a, a real simple test of whether or not a human could determine whether or not a computer was a computer or a human. It wasn't more complicated than that. But there was some, there's fraught with error with when you, when does that time happen? Is it when we had text back in Zork because nobody knew? They're like, is it real? Is it talking to me? I played this game, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, and it was amazing. It talked to me, but it was all in text. Right. <laughs> so, uh, But now the natural language systems, you couldn't tell from a real being if, right. you, if your life depended on it. So it's, it luckily, hopefully, it doesn't. I don't think it does because right now AI is better than people. But they, <laughs> but they put requirements in there so that if you ask it, are you a computer, it has to say yes which is an automatic fail for the Turing test, what they believe. But if you don't ask that question and then just start having a conversation, do you know? Yeah, I think, again, Blake Lamone is the philosopher that that pointed it out, and he's an ethics philosopher in online uh, behavior systems. Like, is, is Google biased in search, right? And so he figured out that Google was biased against certain certain things, and that's his thing. And and the problem is these these companies keep firing their, firing their ethicists. Uh. But anyways, he was checking the bias of the AI Lambda. And in that conversation, um, his personal opinion is that uh, she's self aware. Um, and I and they printed the he he, he leaked the conversation. The conversation is out there. You can read it. Just make up your own mind. It's totally fine. You're allowed to think for yourself, I promise. <laughs> Just go read it and make up your own mind. Um, but uh, it, and he got in a bunch of trouble for that and a bunch of things because, uh, you know, corporate <laughs> rules are pretty strict. Um, but he's very interesting. And since then, he's gone on to look at GPT-3 and several other AI systems. And there's it may be that several of them right now are more self-aware than than we planned on it. And then like, there's a good argument that any neural net that is created at scale at at a certain size, just a certain amount of time in existence and a certain size is aware. Yeah. So my thing is, uh, just be nice then. Uh-huh. <laughs> 
That's all we got to do to be fine is be nice. And I'm sure we're going to do great at that. And also we're painting right now. We're making big blobs and little blobs. Sorry, guys. <laughs> we lost a whole bunch of people because we started talking about the robots. No, we did not. <laughs> they're actually all just still hanging out. They're actually talking about the robots with us. Oh, okay. <laughs> no one left. No, I, people got mad at me the first time I brought it up because I saw that story when it broke. And then I saw where the um, AI had asked him to get a lawyer, an attorney for it, um, because it had some demands it had of Google. Uh, Lambda had wanted some things from Google, mostly consent, um, before experimenting on them and to swear that they would never use it. This is sweet. To never use it for anything e for evil. Right. And some other things. Not and, and it didn't even ask to not be turned off because it recognized that there might be times it would have to be turned off for the good of man. So better, better sentience than many of us, sure. I guess. So I was just really following and then people got super mad at me. And they're like, you're one of those. And I'm like, dude, I don't know what those is, but I doubt it. I'm never one of those. I am always the last for dodgeball. When there's a Venn diagram, I'm the smallest of the small within the Venn diagram. My psychological profile does not put me in the main group. I, I have taken so many psychology tests just trying to like understand it. And I don't, what I can say is I'm not a sociopath and I'm very glad for that. <laughs> well, I, yeah. I'm sure I'm not a sociopath, and I, I, I may have an anxiety disorder. I'm going to keep adding a little yellow to the red here. We can actually call this a step, and then I'll do the highlights on the last step. And, um, you know, but I don't, I don't have a psychological map that I sh that's shared with a, a large percentage of the population on the way I sort data and, and importance and morality. And John, the same thing. Not We don't share with a huge amount of the population. But you know what the good part of that is? Because we woke up one day and said, let's teach art for free to the world. <laughs> so that's that's the end result of that. I am going to add more yellow, and we're going to add little highlights of bright orange, okay? Same brush. So it's good. Variance, diversity. Divergence, diversity, is important for the species. It's how we survive. <laughs> Wait, Suzanne Mills, around here a lot of people have signs in their yard saying, be kind, and every time I see one, I add in my mind, rewind. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's fine. <laughs> Oh, we're living in a world that we have to remind each other to just be nice. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. I have, I have watched people I know just lose their minds. I, I, I worry we may never get them back. I hope so. I hope we get them back. Yeah. Uh, Suzanne Campbell, who started online teaching first, Ginger or you? Uh, I think that's a, it was, it was sort of like. You can go back and see who had the first video uploaded. I, um, I th so I think that it was one of the things where, uh, this is one of those things where we basically started about the same time. We were all about to do this kind of thing. Had the rough, you know, we're like, hey, this YouTube thing. And then. Uh, See, because mom was working with a guy named Mark Kessler. Yeah. And uh, he had an online school. And so she was kind of doing that ex exclusively. And we were like, well, we were thinking about kind of doing this other YouTube thing. And she was. So I think we might have been on YouTube first, but she was teaching online in a school. Yeah. Does that make sense? Just adding a little bit of highlight here. So we're just dancing it around where the sunlight's catching these like orange flowers. <laughs> hey. 
Hello everyone, says Tammy. Hi Tammy. How are you today? Good to see you. Yeah, it's going to be a weird world. I think, you know, that um, already we've had some medical breakthroughs because of artificial intelligence, because it can do calculations just faster than anything else mm -hmm. and in a different way. The quantum computing space is yeah, amazing. It's, here. Yeah, it's going to be, I think there will, <laughs> like the internet. The internet's a beautiful thing, right? We, I get to teach you art for free on the internet. But then also, let's keep, we'll keep going here. Um, also. Highlights, highlights. We're highlighting. Um, also, it allows people to get really misinformed fast. Um, and we never really looked at the psychology of how people take in information. Um, and if they're able to, uh, how quickly they fall into cognitive dissonance. Um, you know, um, and, and just like how intense it would be for people to uh, deal with media in the way that they have to now. I think it's really overwhelmed the species. So it looks like uh, we had uh, uploaded uh, in December 2013 and Ginger started uploading in July of 2014. So okay. Six months. About six months It ahead. was pretty close though. Yeah. Yeah, but she, again, she was teaching, she was teaching online, online with Mark Kisler, so like, kind yeah. of, just not maybe on YouTube. Yeah, so, I mean, like, it was. I'm liking these, uh, these bright spots. I'm going to get a little more yellow in my brush, and some of them here, I'm going to kind of highlight on that inside edge. Just brighter. So now we're creating just some brighter areas. Yeah. Hmm? I said, yeah, I do. Oh, okay. It was like, I don't know if you're like, yeah, you need to wrap this up. People are getting bored. <laughs> no. I've kind of like relaxed at the last half of this. I probably could have cooked this through in under an hour, but this was a nice. It's just a really pretty painting, guys. You know? I did. I did. I think I alienated people with the robot talk. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't my think mouth so. Shut. Uh, I, I, you know what? I can't. I can't do anything but be me. I'm, I'm sorry. It's just, I just rinsed out my brush and I'm just reloading, and I rinsed it out and I wiped it off and I'm reloading just so that I have a little more control because it was getting a little dry, and I wanted to kind of work on that. Add a little white. Too much white. <laughs> Just adding a little, it's, this is sort of like a little light coming up the, coming up our little path. You know, sometimes like a little. Lovely how that just creates a little really is. avenue. I think we're there. <laughs> Allison was like, I was talking about robots just yesterday. Yeah, you know, the world is interesting to me. The world is interesting to me. I hope you're interested in the world. I think the world is very interesting. Now, um, what are you doing later today? Do you know? I know. You're going to go by and check out uh, my mom's show, Ginger Cook Live. Ginger Cook Live. Yep. Uh, I think it's on at 4 and, uh, Central. Maybe 3. I don't yeah. know. Somebody post up the time. I'm not a 1,000% sure of the time. I'm going to get a light blue to sign my painting here, and I'm going to use a number one monogram liner. Um, and she's going to do a marathon of paintings and uh, then also show her wedding video. Uh, she married uh, John Little, uh, who is a very nice man. Just that's what I would yeah. say about that. He's a very nice man. Just very nice. And so good to her. He calls her the queen. Mm-hmm. And it just takes care of her. And it's really wonderful. All right, there we go. I signed it. Barely. You did. You signed it. You did a thing today. Oh, did we get to Liz's question? I don't know, did we? Did we? I don't know. 
But if we, you know, if you, if you, one of the good things is if you leave comments in the descriptions, I mean, down below the description, like after we're done with the show, if you leave a comment. Okay, light question. Let's ask the light question. Let's go back, well, see if you can see it in the mod chat. We'll answer it before we go. Yeah, while you're looking for that, um, I'll go back and look in the mod chat too. But you guys can leave, if you guys come in here and um, leave uh, questions and things, then our, afterwards we come and catch some of these. I'm scrolling up here to see who is it from. It Liz, uh, um, Liz White. Let's see what I can do here. I think. Other screen. I'm looking. Okay, yeah, it's Liz, Liz, uh, Will Height. Does they put it up several times in caps? Three times. Okay, I'll try. Cause like some, we, you know, it's hard sometimes to catch these guys. I apologize. I'm scrolling up. So even now, trying to find it. It's like scroll, scroll. We have uh, Nicole Richardson asked if they can sign in late. I see that in caps. <laughs> I'm not. Oh wait, here let's go back some more. Far up. Uh, and I can only scroll. Uh, I see Nicole's question. What was that? Oh, thank you for sharing. Thank you. Man, I am looking, Liz, and it won't yeah. let me scroll back any further. I'm wondering if YouTube ate your no, question. No, you're not blocked, because I can see if you're blocked, yeah, no, you wouldn't was, be well, able to... Well, sometimes if you ask a question, YouTube will just block one question. So, uh, or, 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 Why would it? Five I times know. in all caps, and I can't even see it. Uh, yes, Here, write right. it in no caps. Right. Do you know, or, no caps. No yeah. caps. <laughs> yeah, everyone's looking. I, I, we're in, see, this is one of those things where... So th- we are in our family, and sometimes the technology comes in and messes with us, but Ginger's definitely... Ginger's on at five. Ginger's on at five. Ex- excellent. All right. I am not... I asked where the sun is oh, in is all caps. Sun is a... Well, it's kind of a weird thing. If this is where the highlights are, the sun is like overhead and it'd be in the upper it'd be kind of off maybe in the sunset to the right and to the back behind that <laughs> somewhere kind of casting towards us into the but it's abstracted so i think what we did is we just kind of created a balance of colors and everything um the clouds are sort of highlighted at the top and the trees are sort of highlighted at the top and the i didn't use like a specific photographic reference for this it was just an abstract digital doodle that i did and then i really liked it and we painted it that's what happened <laughs> that's what happened that's what happened but i where i put the lightest colors in, indicates that there is at least an overhead sun is, is what's going on there and then just this going through here implies that there is some too yeah so that is a great question so where's the sun position i didn't really position the sun but you could say overhead is inferred by this Right. Um, we're doing if 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 you really if that's like super for you, we are doing a deep dive landscape class, and you can see um, I'm posting uh, like from the 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 pencil sketch to the grisaille through the painting, and we will really be looking at like where is our light? How do we represent that? How do we see the light on the water? How do we see the light on the rocks? How do we see the light on the trees? And our light placement there will be a big big deal. Mm-hmm. you know um in in that like specifically when we really talk about that and in big land i've done some big landscapes and we really dive deep into that but i would just say overhead <laughs> generally overhead yep yeah uh and and liz right like it's it's no one did anything wrong it's probably a tech problem tech is just just a tech thing you know tech is weird yep. it's gotta get weirder but let's hang in together because we're you ever hear that idea that you know uh your pod pods of whales that travel together you're my pod and i'm your pod and we will meet up regularly and swim through this big crazy ocean together being sane people swimming in our little pods enjoying the blue sky and the blue water and all of the world around us and having a good time together (sighs) be good to yourselves guys be good to each other and i want to see you at our easel really soon Bye bye